But one thing I love so much about this, there's so many things I love about your course here, but one thing I love so much is that the, the, the amount of time and, and the patient uh, walking through Van Til's sources. And we start to see from old Princeton and old Amsterdam how Van Til is not just developing these ideas in a vacuum, but in large cases, even some of the things that people might scoff at at first are almost just direct quotations from very significant figures, particularly Herman Bovink, but also the, both Hodges, A.A. A. Hodge and uh, Charles Hodge, and many others. I mean, was that a surprise to you and your original research and your dissertation and then, you know, building on that years later? Yes, Camden, it was. Uh, when I uh, went a little bit begrudgingly into the dissertation, Dr. Gaffin pushed me quite uh, forcefully into the study of Van Til, told me he thought it needed a careful treatment, especially on the Trinity. What uh, began to astonish me is that as you look at Van Til's primary sources, he is a self-conscious integration of the English Puritan confessional tradition, Reformed Orthodoxy in that expression, and the Continental Dutch expression that you find summed up so usefully in uh, Bob Dogmatics. And as you start to understand the influences behind Van Til, you realize that he's really uh, integrating distinct strands of confessional reform Trinitarianism at a level that most people miss. In fact, all, I'll, I don't want to sound pretentious, but almost all miss because they're so preoccupied with his apologetical method. But if you step back and take seriously all of his references to the foundation, foundational cardinal importance of the ontological trinity, you'll realize it's not a novel boutique view. It's not a biblicist over in the corner um, uh, thinking in some kind of speculative or creative way per se. It's someone who has received the very best of both the English Puritan and uh, Continental Dutch tradition, and he's moving them forward in an integrative and coherent way. And that insight might have been the biggest insight in terms of my initial a probe into Van Til as yeah. I was writing the dissertation and then putting the course together. I'm I'm always taken aback and surprised at how certain people may be so critical of Van Til on some of these Trinitarian topics. I mean, almost with a like a like they got an axe to grind, like for like despise yeah. him. <laughs> like you mentioned, it they just yeah. get all hot and bothered. But at the same time, those people might go on and praise Bovink. And and we see how Bovink is such a darling of you know, a certain reformed community presently, and in my opinion, rightly so, but the same people who may praise and encourage Bavinkian scholarship and love Bavink and, and all that might turn around and criticize Van Til, who in fact is actually just quoting from the Dutch of Bavink to begin with. On so much of this yeah. Trinitarian theology, you see the, the roots of it so heavily in Bavink, in Hodge as well, but the comparisons. I mean, we're not just talking about being inspired by Bovink, no. and we're certainly not talking about plagiarizing Bovink, but he's he's just standing right on it. it. It's quite astonishing. Two thoughts on that, Camden. The first is that to the extent that Bovink is enthusiastically and cordially received by a confessionally reformed community, so also that should extend to Van Til. Mm -hmm. Van Til, probably more than any other reformed Trinitarian theologian in the 20th century, self-consciously sought to appropriate insights from Bovink. But the surprise, I, I won't call it the surprise ending of the course, but the surprise beginning is that Van Til holds forth contrary to all perceptions of him as being narrow and parochial and sectarian, Van Til is actually deeply, stunningly ecumenical when it comes yeah. to bringing together in a synthetic and organic way the, ins the best of the insights from the Trinitarian tradition of the English Puritans and the Continental Dutch. And so not only is he giving us and restating and applying creatively in certain ways, certain instances, Bovink's theology, he's doing the same with the confessional, with Westminster Confession of Faith as old Princeton received it. And so my hope is that as people take this course, uh, later on maybe get uh, their hands on, the, on, a, on a book companion to the course, that they'll start to recognize that Van Til has not even begun 
to be heard properly. As a theologian who is developing this ethical reformed vision of orthodox confessional Trinitarianism. Mm 